In this module, we shall discuss the classical theory of money market. Classical approach to macroeconomics is based on the assumption that individuals and firms act in their own interest and wages and prices adjust quickly to achieve equilibrium in all markets. Classical economists stress the role of real factors in determining real variables such as output, employment and interest rate. Classical economists stress the self-adjusting tendency of economy. According to them, government policies to ensure adequate demand and output is unnecessary. Under these assumptions, the invisible hand of the free market works well in various markets including goods market, money market and labor market without any government intervention. In particular, wages and prices adjust rapidly to maintain equilibrium in various markets. In the classical money market, the demand for money comes from the households and the money is supplied by the government agency that is the central bank. The classical theory proposes that all the markets re-equilibrate because of the adjustments in prices and wages which are flexible. Also, since according to classicals, supply create its own demand, so business cycles are natural processes of adjustment that do not require any intervention from the government's part, economy work out its problem on its own. The classical economists did not explicitly formulate demand for money theory, but their views are inherent in the quantity theory of money. They emphasize the transaction's demand for money in terms of the velocity of circulation of money or through the quantity theory of money. After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the classical quantity theory of money, understand the neutrality of money, know about the classical money market equilibrium. First, we shall discuss the classical quantity theory of money. A central relationship in the classical model of money market is the classical quantity theory of money which is also known as QTM. The classical quantity theory of money has two formulations under it. First, velocity formulation and second, cash balance formulation. Velocity formulation. Classical QTM explains the relationship between quantity of money and general price level. According to it, there is a direct and equiproportionate relationship between quantity of money and general price level. The basic equation of QTM is expressed by equation of exchange which is expressed as MVT is equals to PT into T where M is the quantity of money, V is the velocity of money which may be defined as the rate at which money turns over in GDP transactions during a given period, P is the price index of items traded and T is the volume of transactions. Another expression of the equation of exchange focuses on income transaction that is MV is equals to PY where V is the income velocity of money MV represents the supply of money which is given and in equilibrium equals the demand for money. Thus, the equation now becomes MD is equals to PY. This transaction's demand for money in turn is determined by the level of full employment income. This equation is also called the Fisher's equation of exchange. According to classical QTM, output is constant at full employment level 
because labor market is always in equilibrium so v also remains constant so if v is fixed and output that is y is constant then there exists a direct and equiproportionate relation between m and p also the demand for money in fisher's approach is a constant proportion of the level of transactions which in turn bears a constant relationship to the level of national income further the demand for money is linked to the volume of trade going on in an economy at any time thus the underlying assumption here is that people hold money to buy goods cash balance formulation it is another version of the qtm that focuses on the demand for money and says that demand for money is a fraction of the nominal income that is md is equals to k into py where k is the cambridge constant measuring the amount of nominal gdp kept in cash form this approach partly overcomes the limitation of the first approach under which demand for money was not clear and the focus was how rapidly money is spent and that is why called the velocity formulation approach so in equilibrium the exogenous supply of money must equal the quantity of money demanded that is m by k is equals to py or mv is equals to py where v is equals to 1 by k moving on to the neutrality of money monetary neutrality according to the classical qtm quantity of money is the only factor that determines the price level whereas other factors such as labor supply demand and production function play no role because these three are real variables so neutrality of money says that the demand for money is determined only by the nominal variables and real variables have no role in it on the other hand fisher effect refers to the one for one relationship between inflation rate and nominal interest rate the fisher effect is also based on classical dichotomy which in turn depend on the neutrality of money according to classical dichotomy there is a theoretical separation of real and nominal variables and monetary neutrality means that money is irrelevant for real variables therefore when quantity of money increases then there is an increase in the price level in the same proportion as a result of high inflation nominal interest rate increases in the same proportion because of the fisher effect and the real interest rate remains unchanged money market the money supply curve in the classical money market is determined from the lm curve which is the liquid money market the equation of the lm curve is ky minus hi is equals to m by p where k is sensitivity of investment to interest rate y is the output h is the sensitivity of money demand to the change in interest rate i is the rate of interest and m by p is the real money supply since here the interest rate is the real interest rate so according to neutrality of money h will be zero that is demand for money is entirely irresponsive to the changes in real interest rate so the lm equation can now be reduced to the equation of qtm that is ky is equals to m by p or m is equals to k 
k into p y. Since h is 0, lm is vertical and hence money supply curve is vertical under classical case. The vertical money supply curve shows the exogeneously given money supply by the central bank that is ms is equals to m. The demand for money in the classical case is determined from the classical QTM which says money demand varies directly with price level that is MD is equals to K into PY. With larger incomes, people want to make larger volumes of transactions and that larger cash balances will therefore be demanded. MD is the demand for money which must equals the supply to money that is MD is equals to MS in equilibrium in the economy where K is the fraction of the real money income that is PY which people wish to hold in cash and demand deposits or the ratio of money stock to income. P here is the price level and Y is the aggregate real income. This equation tells us that other things being equal, the demand for money in normal terms would be proportional to the nominal level of income for each individual and hence for the aggregate economy as well. The supply of money is fixed and it is supplied by the central bank. Let us now discuss the money market equilibrium. The money market equilibrium requires that MS is equals to MD that is money supplied must be equals to money demanded. We can also say this as MS is equals to K into PY. It is also remembered here that Y is fixed due to the existence of full employment in the economy. The following figure represents money market equilibrium where the diagram has total money stock M on the horizontal axis and the level of PY on the vertical axis. The line OL, the slope of line OL is 1 by K and it shows the level of PY that can be supported by different quantities of money supply. As the money supply increases from M1 to M2, the price level rises proportionately from P1 to P2. Thus, this relationship between money supply and the price level and excess money supply which generally means increased demand for commodities that pulls up the general price level also. Also, by monetary neutrality, money supply has no impact on Y which is determined in the real sector and Y is fixed due to full employment. The only way that the classical money market equilibrium can change is only due to any shift in the labor supply and labor demand curve. Let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module. The equilibrium in the classical money market rests on the classical QTM and LM relation. The QTM simply highlights the direct and equiproportionate relation between money demand and general price level and this reflects the neutrality of money that money is not affected by the real variables. This also means that changes in money stock affect only absolute prices and money wages proportionately real variables remain undisturbed. To the classical economist, money was a veil 
that determine the nominal values in which we measure such variables as the level of economic activity but had no effect on real quantities. Moreover, under the classical goods market, the aggregate supply curve is vertical. The vertical aggregate supply curve reflects the fact that higher values of the price level requires proportionately higher levels of money wages for labor market equilibrium. The real age, employment and the therefore the level of output are the same at all prices. The vertical aggregate supply curve implies that output is supply determined in the classical case. Since the classical economist stressed the role of self-stabilizing tendency of the economy. The first stabilizing mechanism is the interest rate and second is the freely flexible prices and money wages that keeps changes in aggregate demand from affecting output. The money market equilibrium is determined by the money supply curve which is a government decision and the money demand is determined from the classical QTM. Together they give us the money market equilibrium in the classical case.